بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الموضوع الذي أتكلم فيه هذا المساء هو تأملات وبصائر حول أشراط الساعة The topic that we will be talking about this evening is called Navigating the Signs of the End of Time. Uruya fi hadith Jibreel anna Jibreel alayhi salam ata an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa jalisun ma'a ashabihi al-kiram radiyallahu ta'ala anhum فَسَأَلَهُ عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ فَأَجَابَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم It is transmitted in Hadith Jibreel which is said to be with regard to all the Sunnah of the Prophet like Al-Fatiha is to the Qur'an. It embodies all of the Sunnah. That the Angel Gabriel, <coughs> the Angel Gabriel, peace be upon him, came to the Prophet, God bless him. While he was sitting with his companions, Gabriel asked him about the meaning of Islam, outward submission, Iman, true inner belief, and Ihsan, moral and spiritual perfection. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave him the answer. ثُمَّ قَالَ جِبْرِيلُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ السَّاعَةِ فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما المسؤول عنها بأعلم من السائل Then Gabriel said So tell me about when the hour of the day of judgment will be God's messenger peace be upon him replied He who has been asked about this namely the prophet himself has no more knowledge about it than the one who is asking the question namely Gabriel. ثم قال جبريل عليه السلام فأخبرني عن أمارتها فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تلد الأمة ربتها وأن ترى الكفاة العراة العالة في عاء الشاء يتطاولون في البنيان وفي رواية صحيحة أخرى then Gabriel said, So tell me about its warning sign. God's messenger, peace be upon him, answered, That the slave girl give birth to her mistress, and that you see the barefoot, naked, and needy shepherds of sheep vying with each other in building tall buildings. In another authentic transmission, it is related that the Prophet, God extol him and grant him perfect peace, said when a woman gives birth to her master in the masculine instead of the feminine form. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي خَاتِمَةِ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ إِنَّ جِبْرِيلَ قَدْ أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَةً <clears throat> وفي رواية أخرى ذاك جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم معالم دينكم وفي رواية ذلك جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم أمر دينكم <clears throat> ومن هذا الحديث الجامع للسنة كلها وللأحاديث النبوية كلها من المعلوم أن الاهتمام بالساعة مع تخصيص علمها بالله تعالى ثم معرفة أشراطها من صلب هذا الدين وهو في ذلك بمثابة الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان <coughs> At the conclusion of this illustrious hadith in which Gabriel asked these fundamental questions God's messenger, peace be upon him, says that the questioner was Gabriel. 
who came to you to teach you your religion. Another transmission says, He, Gabriel, came to you to teach you the matter or the substance of your religion. A third transmission states, That was Gabriel, who came to teach you the landmarks, ma'alim, or the fundamental guidelines of your religion. And since this hadith, Hadith Jibreel, contains in principle all of the Sunnah of the Prophet and all of the Ahadith of the Prophet, then we understand from that the importance of the, of the last hour and then especially the importance of the signs of the last hour um, because the Prophet emphasized their importance in this hadith. وَعَتَّنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَثِيرًا بِتَعْلِيمِ أَشْرَاتِ السَّاعَةِ فَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي الصَّحِيحِ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ خَصَّ يَوْمًا كَامِلًا مِنَ الصُّبْحِ إِلَى الْمَغْرِبِ لِنَشْرِ هَذَا التَّعْلِيمِ روى البخاري ومسلم عن حذيفة بن اليمان رضي الله عنه صاحب سر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال لقد خطبنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خطبة ما ترك فيها شيئا إلى قيام الساعة إلا ذكره علمه من علمه وجهله من جهله إن كنت لا أرى شيئا قد نسيته فأراه فأذكره كما يذكر الرجل الرجل وجه الرجل إذا غاب عنه ثم إذا رآه عرفه. God's messenger, peace be upon him, paid much attention to teaching the signs of the last hour. It has come down to us in authentic transmissions that the Prophet, peace be upon him, once spent an entire day from dawn till sunset instructing his companions about this matter. Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, God be pleased with him, who is known as the keeper of the secrets of God's messenger, that he said, truly, the Prophet God extol him and grant him perfect peace, spoke to us in a special khutbah in which he did not leave out anything that would happen until the coming of the last hour, but that he mentioned it. Those who have knowledge of it have knowledge of it. Those who are ignorant of it are ignorant of it. Truly, I would see a thing happen that I had forgotten but then, when I would see it there before me, I would remember it. Just like a man remembers the face of another man who has been absent when he sees him. وَمِنْ أَهَمِّ أَشْرَاتِ السَّاعَةِ الْعَلَامَاتُ الْمَذْكُورَةُ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الشَّرِيفِ المروي عن سمرة بن جندب رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم ساعة حتى تروا أمورا عظاما لم تكونوا ترونها ولا تحدثون بها أنفسكم وفي رواية أخرى عن سمرة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال سترون قبل أن تقوم ساعة أشياء تنكرونها عظاما تقولون هل كنا حدثنا بهذا فإذا رأيتم ذلك فاذكروا الله تعالى واعلموا أنها أوائل الساعة وفي رواية ثالثة عن سمرة قال إن النبي قال ولن يكون ذلك أي ظهور الدجال الكبير حتى تروا أمورا يتفاقم شأنها في نفوسكم وتسألون بينكم هل كان نبيكم ذكر لكم منها ذكرا ومن المعلوم من هذا الحديث الشريف أن سؤالنا اليوم 
هل كان نبينا ذكر لنا من ذلك ذكرا هو أيضا من أشراط الساعة Among the most important signs of the hour and the end of time are those that are mentioned in the following hadith that I'm going to read to you which are from Samura ibn Jundu God be pleased with him These are among the most general of all the signs He said that the Prophet said peace be upon him the last hour will not come until you see shocking things that you never saw before and that never occurred to you. In another transmi transmission, Samura relates from the Prophet wasallam that he said, surely you will see shocking things before the coming of the last hour, which you will reject. You will say, were we given any hadiths? Were we given any narrations about this? When you see this, call God, exalted be he to mind. And know that these are the first signs of the coming of the hour. In a third transmission, Samura relates from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he said that none of this will be, referring in this particular hadith, to the coming of the Antichrist. Until you see things that reach alarming proportions in your souls, and you will ask each other, did your prophet, God extol him and grant him perfect peace, mention to you anything about them? From these hadith we learn that in asking ourselves the question, did our prophet tell us anything about these things that are happening, that that question itself is one of the signs of the end of time. وَإِذَا رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْأَمَارَتَيْنِ الْمَذْكُورَتَيْنِ فِي حَدِيثِ جِبْرِيلِ لَوَجَدْنَا فِيهِمَا دَلَالَةً عَمَّةً وَاسِعَةً عَلَى فَسَادِ الْأَحْوَالِ الْمُسْتَغْرِبَةِ أَلَّتِي تُقَلِّبُ أَنْظِمَةَ الْخَيْرِ عَلَى, رؤس على رُؤُوسِهَا فِي آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ فتستبدلها بأنظمة الشر فقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تلد الأمة ربتها وفي الرواية الأخرى التي سمعتموها وإذا ولدت المرأة ربها فذلك يدل على كثرة عقوق البنات والأولاد فيعاملون أمهاتهم وآباءهم في آخر الزمان كما كان السيد العنيف غير الرحيم يعامل رقيقه بالإهانة والسب والضر فتنقلب الأمور حتى تصير العالي سافلا والسافل عاليا ويصير التلميذ كأنه الأستاذ ويصير الأستاذ كأنه تلميذ ولكن دلالة الحديث أعم من ذلك أيضا كما أوضح ذلك العلامة أبو بكر العدني في بحوثه القيمة عن أشراط الساعة فقال إن ذلك يدل أيضا على نقض قرار العلم الصحيح العلم الصحيح ينتهي وكذلك يدل على على نقض قرار الاعتقاد الصحيح لأن العلم الصحيح والاعتقاد if we look back now on the two signs mentioned in Hadith Jibreel, we see that they convey even broader indications than may be readily apparent about the corruption of things that happens at the end of time. A corruption that turns the system of good up on its head and overthrows it and establishes a system of evil. Thus, when the Prophet said, peace be upon him, the slave girl will give birth to her mistress. And in the other transmission that you heard, when a woman gives birth to her master, it is not just indicating that there will be extensive filial disobedience of daughters and sons towards their mothers and fathers in the end of time, so that they will treat their parents like a cruel slave master would treat or mistreat his slaves with degradation and curses and blows. Rather, it also indicates that the high will become lowly, 
and the lowly will become high, and the teacher will become like the student, and the student will become like the teacher. And as Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Adani has shown in his valuable studies of the signs of the end of time, <clears throat> it also indicates that there will be general breakdown in the immutable principles that underlie true knowledge and that underlie also true belief because that's what overthrows the whole system. أما الأمارة الثانية المذكورة في حديث جبريل فهي وترى الكفاة العراة العالة رعاء الشاء يتطاولون في البنيان وفي الرواية في رواية أخرى وصف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هؤلاء بأنهم الكفاة العراة السم البكم ومعناه أنهم سم عن سماع الحق وقبوله وبكم عن التكلم بالخير والحق ويدل ذلك أيضا على وصف البلادة فيهم وفي رواية قال وإذا كان الحفاة العراة رؤساء الناس فذاك من أشراقها وفي رواية أخرى لمسلم إذا رأيت الحفاة العراة السم البكم ملوك الأرض فهذه دلالة عامة كما أثبت ذلك الشيخ أبو بكر العدني على نقد قرار الحكم السياسي وكذلك على نقد قرار النظام الاقتصادي ومعنى ذلك أن في آخر الزمان يتمكن أراذل الناس الذين لا أمانة فيهم ولا خير من الحكم السياسي والنظام الاقتصادي As for the second sign mentioned in Hadith Jibreel it is and you will see the barefoot naked and needy shepherds of sheep vying with each other in building tall buildings In another transmission these people are described as barefoot naked, deaf and dumb that is they are deaf <coughs> when it comes to hearing the truth and following it. And they are mute and speechless and dumb as regards speaking what is good, honest, and true. These descriptions also imply that they are people marked by dull-wittedness and stupidity. In another transmission, Al-Bukhari relates, and when the barefoot and naked become the heads of the people, then that is one of the portents of the last hour. Muslim tra transmits in another narration, and when you see the barefoot, naked, deaf and dumb as the kings of the earth. Here too, as Shaykh al-Adini has explained, we have a broader general principle, and that is that among the portents of the end of time will be the breakdown in the basic principle that underlie true political legitimacy and also a sound economic order and the proper distribution of wealth. This means that at the end of time, the worst and the lowliest of human beings who completely lack integrity and trustworthiness will, become, will come to dominate the political and the economic orders. ومن زمن قديم قسم العلماء أخبار آخر الزمان إلى ثلاثة أقسام ورأوا أن هذه الأقسام الثلاثة تيسر على الناس فهم هذه الأخبار والاستفادة منها أما القسم الأول فهو الآيات البعيدة التي قد حدثت في أيام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو في أيام السلف الصالح ثم انقرضت ويقال لها الآيات الصغرى وكذلك الآيات القديمة والبعيدة والبدايات وأما القسم الثاني فهو آيات متوسطة أو آيات وسطى وهي العلامات التي تحدث وتتكرر منذ زمن السلف الصالح 
إلى الآيات الكبرى في آخر الدنيا ومن المهم أن الآيات المتوسطة قد تتكرر كثيرا عبر السنين والقرون ومن الآيات المتوسطة أيضا مقدمات للآيات الكبرى النهائية تشبهها وليست إياها فهناك مهديون كثيرون يظهرون قبل الإمام المهدي العظيم في آخر الزمان وكذلك ومن أمثال ذلك الخلفاء الراشدون الذين سماهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمهديين وكذلك عمر بن عبد العزيز رضي الله عنه وهناك عدد كبير من الدجاجلة يظهرون من زمن إلى آخر قبل ظهور الدجال الكبير في آخر الزمان فهذه مقدمات وأما القسم الثالث فهو الآيات الكبرى التي تعلن عن نهاية الدنيا ويقال لها الآيات الكبرى ويقال لها الآيات الكبرى والآيات القديمة والآيات القريبة عفوا والنهائية ومنها ظهور المهدي عليه السلام والدجال الكبير والنزول المسيح عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام وخروج يأجوج ومأجوج وطلوع الشمس من مغربها ومن المهم أيضا أن أخبار آخر الزمان ليست كلها انذارات ومنكرات بل منها أيضا بشارات عظيمة وحصانات From early on, the great scholars of Islam divided the reports of the end of time into three broad categories and they held that these divisions made it easier for the people to understand the signs of the end of time and to draw benefit from them. The first of these categories is constituted by signs in the distant past that occurred during the first generations of Islam and have finished long ago. These are called minor signs. They're called old, distant, and early signs. The second of these categories is constituted by intermediate and middle signs. These signs are ones that occur often and repeat themselves in various forms until the end of the world. It is important to, uh, to emphasize this point about them. Also, among these signs, there are other signs that are precursors or forerunners of the big events that come at the end of time. <clears throat> so, for example, there are many Mahdi figures that appear before the Imam al-Mahdi at the end of time. Just as there are also many Dajjals that appear before the great Dajjal comes at the end of time. The Prophet, peace be upon him, referred to the Khalifa Umar, to Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali as Mahdi's. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz also had that description. As for the third categories of the signs, these are the signs that come at the very end. They're called the proximate signs. They're called the final signs. The most important of these are the appearance of the Mahdi and then also the Antichrist, the second coming of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Gog and Magog, the rising of the sun from the place where it sets, and so forth. It's also very important to note, and we'll try to point this out as we go through some of these signs, that not all of the signs of the end of time are bad signs. Many of them, in fact, many of them, in fact, are good signs and hopeful signs and protections. أَمَّا الْقِسْمُ الْأَوَّلُ وَهُوَ الْآيَاتُ الْأَوَّلَنِيَّةُ الْقَدِيمَةُ وَالْبَعِيدَةُ الَّتِي قَدْ حَدَثَتْ وَانْقَرَضَتْ فَمِنْهَا وَفَاتُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وكذلك فتح مدينة القدس الشريف الذي تحقق في حكم الخليفة الراشد عمر الفاروق روى الإمام البخاري عن عوف بن مالك رضي الله عنه أنه قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
في غزوة تبو وهو في قبة من أدم فقال أعدد ستا بين يدي الساعة موتي ثم فتح بيت المقدس ثم ذكر بقية الحديث ومن بشارات هذه الفترة المتوسطة أيضا قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خير القرون قرن ثم الذين يدونهم ثم الذين يدونهم ومن انذارات هذه الفترة قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم للخليفة الراشد عثمان رضي الله عنهم إن الله مقمسك قميسا أي الخلافة فإذا أرادك المنافقون على خلعه فلا تخلعه وكذلك الحديث الصحيح الوارد في الخليفة عثمان أيضا رضي الله عنهم من نجا من ثلاث فقد نجا وقال ذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث مرات من نجا من ثلاث فقد نجا قالوا ماذا يا رسول الله قال موتي والدجال ومقتل خليفة مصطبر بالحق يعطيه وتسببت فتن, فتن أمة الإسلام كلها عن مقتل الخليفة الراشد عثمان رضي الله عنه ومن الإنذارات المتعلقة بهذا القسم الأول من أشراط الساعة قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هلكة أمتي على يدي أغيلمة من قريش وفي رواية إن هلاك أمتي على رؤوس غلمة سفهاء من قريش والإشارة إلى يزيد بن معاوية فهو أول أغيلمة بني أمية الذين بويعوا بالخلافة والإشارة أيضا إلى أعوانه وأعوانهم كعبيد الله بن زياد والحجاج بن يوسف Among the first, among the signs of the first category that of the early or ancient first signs that have occurred and passed away are the demise of the Prophet, peace be upon him the conquest of Jerusalem which took place after that during the reign of the rightly guided Caliph Umar al farooq God be pleased with him. Imam al-Bukhari transmits on the authority of Malik ibn Awf, God be pleased with him, that he said, I came to the Prophet, God extol him and grant him perfect peace, during the campaign of Tabuk, while he was in a dome tent of leather hide. He said to me, count six great portents before the coming of the last hour my death and thereupon the conquest of Jerusalem and then the remainder of the hadith. Among the eternal good tidings of this period are the words of the Prophet وسلم, the best of generations is my generation then those who come after them and then those who come after them. Among the warnings of this period are the words that the Prophet وسلم, addressed to the rightly guided Caliph Uthman, God be pleased with him. Truly, God will clothe you with a special garment, meaning the Caliphate. So when the hypocrites seek to rip it off from your back, do not take it off. Similar to this is another authentic hadith regarding the Caliph Uthman, God be pleased with him. Whoever is delivered safely from three catastrophes will truly be safe. The Prophet repeated this three times. Whoever is delivered safely from three catastrophes will truly be safe. The companion said, what are they, O Messenger of God? He said, my death, the Dajjal, and the murder of a Caliph who patiently holds to the truth and justly dispenses it. All of the trial, all of the trials, all of the civil strife, all of the trouble that has afflicted this ummah 
and its history come from the assassination of the rightly guided Caliph of Man. Among the grave warnings of this period are the words of the Prophet, the destruction of my Ummah will be at the hands of wretched little boys from Quraysh. And truly, the destruction of my Ummah will be upon the heads of stupid little boys from Quraysh. The reference here is first and foremost to Yazid ibn Muawiyah, who was the first of the wretched little boys of Quraysh to be given the bay'ah during the Umayyad dynasty. It refers also to their helpers such as Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. أَمَّا الْقِسْمُ الْمُتَوَسِّتُ مِنْ أَخْبَارِ آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ فَإِنَّهَا كَثِيرَةٌ جِدًّا تَمْنَأُ الْأَجْزَاءِ ومنها البشارة العظمى التي رواها الإمام مسلم لا تزال طائفة من أمة على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم فهذه بشارة ومنها الإنذار العام إذا رأيت شحا مطاعا وهوا متبعا والدنيا مؤثرة وإعجاب كل ذي رأي برأيه فعليك خويسة نفسك وكذلك قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوشك الأمم أن تداع عليكم كما تداع الأكلة إلى قصعتها فقال قائل ومن قلة نحن يومئذ قال بل أنتم يومئذ كثير ولكنكم غثاء كغثاء السير ولينزعن الله من صدور عدوكم المهابة منكم وليقذفن الله في قلوبكم الوهن فقال قائل يا رسول الله ما الوهن قال حب الدنيا وكراهية الموت ومنها البشارة الكريمة أمتك المطر لا يدرى أولها خير أو آخرها As for the second category of intermediate signs that take place between the earliest period and the very end, they are exceedingly numerous and they fill volumes. Among them is the great tiding of good news, there will always be a party from my ummah who remain on the truth, never being harmed by those who desert them. May God make us among them. Among them also is the broad general warning. When you see extreme avarice obey, blind self-will follow, the world, this world preferred over all else, and the obsession of each person who holds an opinion with his own opinion, then it is your obligation to take care of your proper self. There is also the Prophet's warning. A time is about to come when the various nations will incite each other against you, just as people ready to eat and seated around a platter invite each other to eat. The questioner asked, Will that be because of our small number on that day? God's messenger, peace be upon him, replied, On the contrary, you will be very many on that day, but you will be scum, like the scum carried away on the froth of flooding water. Most surely, God will take out from the hearts of your enemies their awe of you, and God will surely cast feebleness in your own hearts. The questioner asked, O Messenger of God, what is this feebleness? He answered, love of this world and the loathing of death. Among the beautiful tidings of this middle period are the words of the Blessed Prophet وسلم, My ummah is like the good rain. It will not be known whether the first of it is better or the last. ومن نذر الفترة المتوسطة الحديث الذي رواه البخاري ومسلم يوشك الفرات أن ينحسر عن كنز وفي رواية 
عن جبل من الذهب فمن حضره فلا يأخذن منه شيئا وفي روايات أخرى أنذر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حروب طاحنة فتسبب عن عن تكالب الأمم على هذا الكن وفي طرق أخرى أنبأ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بأن هذه الكنوز سوف تكتشف تكتشف في العراق والفرات في العراق وكذلك في إيران وكذلك في بلاد الخليج ووصف هذه الكنوز في بعض الروايات بأنها ليست من الذهب والفضة حقيقة بل قال في بعض الروايات إنها معادن مختلفة يأتيها أشرار الناس وفي رواية أخرى وصفها فقال ستكون معادن يحضرها شرار الناس وفي أخبار هذه الفترة المتوسطة قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فإذا رأيت مكة قد بعجت كظائمة ورأيت البناء يعلو رؤوس الجبال فاعلم أن الأمر قد أظل وكلمة كظائم جمع كظامة وهو النفق أو القناة الذي يحفر في الأرض فالإشارة إلى الأنفاق التي في جبال مكة اليوم وهي حديثة جدا كما تعلمون كذلك من من أشراط هذه الفترة المتوسطة إخبار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن تقارب الزمان وتقارب الأسواق وانتشار المعاملات الرباوية قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم ساعة حتى تظهر الفتن ويكثر الكذب وتتقارب الأسواق ويتقارب الزمان قال صلى الله عليه وسلم سيأتي على الناس زمان يأكلون فيه كلهم الربا فقلنا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلهم قال نعم ومن لم يأكله أصابه من غباره <coughs> Among the warning signs of the middle period is the hadith transmitted by Bukhari and Muslim the final hour will not occur um, when he said a time is about to come when the Euphrates River in Iraq is disclosed as having a great treasure of gold in another transmission a mountain of gold. Whoever is present there, let him take nothing from it. In other transmissions, the Prophet warned of ruinous war that would result from various nations of the earth fighting each other to control this mountain of gold. In other transmissions, the Prophet وسلم, alerted us to the fact that this treasure would be found in Iraq, in Iran, and in the Gulf. In some reports, he specified that this wealth is not actually gold and silver. In some, he said it is various minerals, ma'adin, that will be sought out by the most evil of people. In another transmission, the Prophet said, peace be upon him, there will surely be minerals that will be attended to by the worst of people. Among these reports of the middle period before the end of time, are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thus, when you see that Mecca has been gutted with tunnels, and you see the buildings towering over the tops of her mountains, then know that the great matter of the last hour has cast its shadow upon you. Among the signs of the end of time in the middle period also are the contraction of time the coming together of world markets, and the prevalence of usurious monetary dealings. The Prophet said, peace be upon him, the last hour will not occur until civil strife appears everywhere. Lying will be prevalent, 
world markets will come close together and time will be contracted. He also said, peace be upon him, a time will surely come over the people when all of them partake of riba. We said, O messenger of God, all of them. He answered, yes, whoever does not partake of it directly will still be afflicted with something of its dust. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما رواه مسلم بادروا بالعمل وبادروا بالأعمال في رواية أخرى ستا الدجالة والدخانة والدابة الأرض وطلوع الشمس من مغربها وخويسة أحدكم وأمر العمة وقوله خويسة أحدكم معناه حادثة الموت التي تخص كل إنسان منا وأما أمر العامة فهو أمر الساعة الكبرى لأنها تعم الناس كله ومعلوم من هذا الحديث الشريف أن موت الإنسان هو أيضا من أشرات الساعة الكبرى لأن بذلك القيامة السكرى as for the third category's importance of the last hour, this group is exclusively concerned with the final major signs, all of which occur in great proximity to the hour's actual coming. Among the most important of these are the appearance of the Mahdi, then the appearance of the big Antichrist, the second coming of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the coming forth of Gog and Magog, the appearance of the beast of the earth and the rising of the sun in the rest in the west. God's messenger said in a hadith transmitted by Muslim, rush to do good deeds before six major calamities occur. The Antichrist, the smoke, the beast of the earth, the rising of the sun from its place of setting, and that special little affair that each of you faces and that great general affair that faces you all. This reference to that special little affair that, it faces, that faces each of you is a polite way of referring to personal death. Personal death is also one of the signs of the Day of Judgment because when that happens, we are faced with our, uh, with our minor resurrection. And the Prophet said here, hasten to do good before six major calamities, indicating that this is the proper response to these frightening things, that buckle down, get yourself ready, do toga, do good, get things right among yourself and in your family and with others. من شأن هذه الآيات الأخيرة التي هي في القسم الثالث أنها تحدث كلها سويا بسرعة بدون فواصل كبيرة بينها واحدة بعد الأخرى ولذلك قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الأمارات خرزات منظومات في سلك فإن يقطع السلك يتبع بعضه بعضا one of the characteristics of these final signs that are of the third group is that they all come together. There's very little time between them. And for this reason, the Prophet, peace be upon him, likened them to beads that are on a string. He said, the supreme, he said, peace be upon him, the major signs are strung beads arranged in order on a string. If the string is cut, 
each of them will follow the other and fall off. وبظهور هذه الآيات العظام تتغير الأحوال العامة في الأرض ثم في العالم العلوي في السماء وبذلك تظهر أشياء غريبة غير معهودة وذلك بتغير نظام الطبيعة المعهود الذي نعبر عنه بالعادات المعهودة بين الأسباب الطبيعية ومسبباتها. With the coming of these last signs of the third category, these prodigious signs, the general order of things on earth and in the heaven changes forever. And with this we see the end of the natural order as we know it, that common relationship between causes and effects that we're all used to. إن الله تعالى لم يجعل العلم بأشراط الساعة من صلب هذا الدين إلا لحكمة أرادها ومن هذه الحكمة أن هذه الآيات قوية الاتصال بإيماننا بالغيب وببعث الموتى وبالحساب في اليوم الآخر ومن شأنها أن تذهب عنا الغفلة حتى نتوب إلى الله تعالى ونقبل عليه بالطاعة والأعمال الصالحة قال الله تعالى فهل ينظرون إلا الساعة أن تأتيهم بغتة فقد جاء أشراطها فأن لهم إذا جاءتهم ذكراهم وبالاستعداد للقيامة الكبرى يستعد الإنسان حتما للقيامة الصغرى التي هي وفاته الخاصة التي عبر عنها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بخويسة أحدكم ومن حكمة الله تعالى في بث العلم بهذه الأشراط على لسان نبيه الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم أنها تثبت سعة علم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بكل ما كان وبكل ما يكون ولا سيما لا سيما بعصرنا الحاضر الذي يختلف عن العصور السابقة اختلافا عجيبا وهي تتبين عن رحمة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم علينا وعلى أمته حتى عمت هدايته وإرشاده كل زمان وكل مكان إلى نهاية الزمان والمكان Surely God exalted be he, did not make knowledge of the signs of the last hour, the backbone of our religion, except for a special wisdom that he willed to be. Part of this wisdom is that these signs are powerfully connected with our belief in the unseen, the resurrection of the dead, the reckoning on the last day. It is also part of God's wisdom that attention to these signs is meant to wake us up and to remove our slumber and negligence so that we turn back to God in seriousness. We turn back to Him in tawbah, obedience and good works. God says in the Qur'an, Do they await anything else other than that the last hour come upon them unexpectedly for its portents have already come? Then, when it has actually come upon them, what benefit will their remembrance bring them then? By preparing ourselves for the major resurrection, we necessarily prepare ourselves for the minor resurrection, which is personal death, which the Prophet referred to as khuwaysati ahadikum, the special little affair that each one of you faces. Also part of God's wisdom in making knowledge of the signs of the end of time, known on the tongue of his Prophet وسلم, is that it shows in vast detail the Prophet's knowledge about all that has been and all that will be, especially as regards this present age of ours in which we are living, which is so radically different than anything that went before. In this there is also a demonstration of the Prophet's infinite mercy وسلم, upon us on his ummah 
and the validity of his teaching and of his religion and his guidance for every time and for every place until the end of time and place. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.